Hello, fans of DX Engineering on Facebook and YouTube. It's Friday afternoon here in the Eastern Time Zone of the USA. It's 20 Zulu on August 20th, 2021. It's time for the weekend special. And this is a show where we talk about a lot of different things. And sometimes we have guests on. Uh, sometimes we have little short presentations. And uh, today we're going to follow up on a little bit of what I talked about on Tuesday. And then I'm going to show you some things that uh, that I've been doing here at K3LR in the past week. And uh, as we are uh, uh, doing some receive antenna systems here. And so I'm going to share my screen. And uh, here we go. And what we're working on is um, this particular product from Hi Z. And this is the Hi Z eight element multi band eight circle receiver array. And you can see that um, you get these eight buffer amplifiers that go at the base of 23 foot verticals. And I'm going to show you how those get laid out. Here's one of these buffer amplifiers. Um, one screw goes to the uh, vertical itself, another screw goes to ground. And then here's the F connector output. And then this is the phasing box. Uh, the, here's where the eight vertical antennas, the outputs of the buffers will hook in here. Um, and then this, this goes to the shack. And then there are two delay lines. And uh, the short delay goes to the outer ones and the long delay goes in the middle. And then you have control, control one, two, and three, and that controls the direction that this is going to be shot in. And this is the control head. And um, here is a, if you want to uh, uh, go between 75 ohms and 50 ohms, uh, Hi Z makes a little transformer. Another shot of the control and the uh, product manual, etc. So um, here is the way these verticals are laid out. And uh, so this is north. And you have vertical one, vertical two, vertical three, vertical four, etc. And the diameter of the array that I have here is 113 uh, feet. So that means from vertical one to vertical five, it's 113 feet. And so that's the north vertical to the south vertical. And they're all, you want to get these uh, spaced exactly. Um, and you can see the other dimensions here, uh, the 30 feet, uh, 6 and 15 16 inches on dimension C. Uh, between the verticals, about uh, 43 feet and uh, et cetera, uh, 104 feet between uh, dimension A. So this is the way they are laid out. And uh, so I am going to uh, stop sharing, come back here. Then I'm going to share again and share screen, share. And now we're going to take a look at a uh, slide deck here. And uh, let's do a slide show. And we were talking about on Tuesday, the single point ground panel. Remember, this is where you have your radio and your radio is connected to an RF ground plane. This can be copper or it can be aluminum. Um, and then that connects to the single point ground panel. You see yeah, that's the uh, connection. And then all of the other items in your shack go to the single point ground panel. And so here is the single point ground panel at K3LR. And what I've done is um, I've, I've divided it up by station. So uh, each one of the stations has their own single point ground panel. And then all of those panels are connected together by using the perimeter ground system, uh, on, which is in the floor. And so you can see that this is a very heavy copy, copper available at DX Engineering using brass hardware with external tooth lock washers. And then this two inch strap this goes down underneath the operating table and connects to the number two solid that is underneath the um, uh, 
the radio operating positions. Here's the, the single point ground panel populated. So here's the connection down to the uh, ground system. This is a connection to the amplifier. This is a connection to the radio. This is the one inch uh, tin copper braid. This is a connection to an antenna switch. All right, so each station has its own. And here's that, that copper, uh, two inch copper coming down and uh, underneath the operating positions and it's silver soldered onto the number two solid copper, which is tinned. Okay, and here's uh, that number two running along just above the floor. And this is CAD welded onto the top of one of the ground rods. And there are 13 eight foot ground rods in the floor here. And so we have a very good ground. And of course, this, this grounding uh, connection is also connected to the um, ground system for the, uh, the main breaker box. So that there will be no differences in voltage or differences in potential. So here are the copper uh, ground plane plates. This is on the back of one of the amplifiers. And you see the connection here to the amplifier stud, one inch uh, wide tin copper braid from DX Engineering using brass hardware. And then here's the connection to the single point ground panel. Uh, the back end of one of the uh, ICOM radios here. And again, you can see right here is the one inch braid that connects to the uh, copper plate. And then from the copper plate, it goes down to the single point ground panel. And so uh, we were talking about this receive array and uh, this picture isn't the best, but this is a, a holistic picture of the 113 feet spacing between these eight verticals. And each vertical is 23 feet tall. And that hybrid combiner box sits in here in this um, metal box. Okay, so uh, we have all eight verticals here, 113 foot diagonal spacing. And here's one of the 113 or the 23 foot verticals. And there's an insulator right here. And then there's uh, there are two ground rods here and um, more on that in a minute. And then this is uh, where the element buffer lives. And uh, here is, is a set of two 100 microhenry chokes. And what these chokes do is uh, it's very important that uh, once you get done with 80 meters, we do not want these systems to be uh, in, uh, in the path. They're active amplifiers. And so uh, with multiple transmitters on 40, 20, 15, and 10, uh, the, this this back-to-back -back choke um, helps uh, decrease the sensitivity. And in fact, you can't hear anything above four megahertz because of these chokes in the system. And inside the box is, uh, this is an earlier version of the high z um, element buffer. And this has been modified so that there's a signal port and a power port. We are not using a bias T to put uh, voltage over the coax. And that's done because if you get any moisture in this system at all, it will make noise. Here's the connection to the top insulator going to the vertical element through the two 100 microhenry chokes. And then here's the connection to the ground rods. And so if you uh, were watching here, a few weeks ago, you saw that I was actually measuring these chokes. And here's, here is uh, two 100 microhenry chokes in series. And then I'm actually checking the inductance of each pair of these. And you can see that the two combined for 200.6 microhenries. Well, that wasn't always the case in every one because the manufacturer's specification for this is plus or minus 20%, which is a lot. So um, I actually took and measured each one of these chokes, recorded uh, their inductance, and then grouped in a, a series of four, grouped the four closest together uh, so that they would all sit in the same four square system. The, four, the eight circle and four square systems depend upon sameness. So you wanna have all of the variables that you can control to go to the same. 
remember this is the box where the element buffer is and the the uh, ground system is here and so we've been uh, actually revamping our ground system and putting in this is the support for the verticals themselves and this is one of them and then uh, here's one of the two ground rods and we actually silver solder using a torch onto the ground rod and then you can see here's the strap going between the two ground rods this is the support pipe for the element buffer box and this is the support angle for the vertical itself and when we're going by here we want to make sure that this sits on on the same ground as well so we have a hole drilled in here we've used uh, steel wool to uh, clean this up and then of course ss30 and then uh, we have uh, we actually take and put it uh, with the hardware brass hardware again using external tooth lock washers and you can see the ground rod up here where it's been silver soldered the connection onto the aluminum angle and uh, you can see that better there and there are the two ground rods these are two four foot ground rods and that is the entire ground system for these um, uh, high z receive verticals that we'll use on 80 and 160 meters None, another shot of that and here's a little bit further away you can see the support for the box and uh, then also the the new ground system each one of, we actually have 12 of these verticals we have uh, an eight circle and a four square here and so we we wanted to redo them this year we were having some trouble with the concrete uh, that we had in so that uh, that project is underway and we will continue to uh, update you here as we reconstruct this array so um, Let's, uh, let's go back and see what's going on in the chat. See if you have any questions. And uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got uh, AB7 Radio Radio is on. And from Jacksonville, Florida, it's Kilo Delta 2 Sierra X-Ray Delta. And uh, let's see. We have uh, Richmond is watching from Liberia. Echo Lima 2 Bravo Golf. And uh, Mike uh he says love all the shows and kevin says uh, good morning from a chilly auckland new zealand it's six celsius here and uh, we have uh, rod kate rr is on and the 113 foot diameter circle for 160 only 85 feet for uh 160 80 and 40 but um actually the, this array at 113 works very well on 80 meters as well. Uh, patterns are a little bit different, as Rod points out, between the uh, the two diagonals there. And that was uh, Zulu Lima 1, Mike Hotel Sierra, New Zealand. Dino says, if I'm space limited, could I install this array centered around my DXE Thunderbolt 160 meter vertical? Um, that would be, you would have to take some precautions. And I would suggest that you look at the, the sequencer with the DX engineering uh, receive vertical system, Dino, um, because you will burn out those buffers when you transmit if you don't protect them. Kilo Papa 4 Lima Radio is on, and uh, Frankie KE5KQL and KD5SKS from Edmond, Oklahoma. And uh, there's a hello from KRR and uh, Lima United 9 Charlie Bravo Lima from Argentina. And Oscar Zulu won Delta Whiskey X-Ray from Denmark. And Kevin says, good earthing video info. Kilo Mike for Mike Papa Yankee in South Carolina. And Steve, November Alpha 5 Charlie says, is the spacing between the high Z vertical elements critical or just needs to be uniform across all elements? Um, the spacing is critical for a given pattern. And uh, so if you take a look at the manuals that are online, you'll see exactly what happens with the various spacings, but they all have to be the same. And uh, let's see, we have WA4 Mike Oscar Mike on, and it says, uh, good afternoon, Tim. Uh, something all of us need to aspire to and accomplish. Yeah, grounding and bonding is very important. 
um, from Solon, Ohio. It's Kilo Charlie 8 Radio Victor Delta. Would a copper water pipe work for a ground which is connected to the tub that is close to my radio room? Or would this be a bad idea? Uh, these days, I would suggest that you not use that as a ground rod because there can be plastic fittings or other fittings that have uh, resistance. So it's best always to have a dedicated ground rod for your station. And then, of course, uh, consult with your electrician, but a licensed uh, electrician. You do have to have a ground rod that goes to your main breaker box as well. Germany 6, Juliet Mike X-Ray on from England. And uh, let's see, uh, Rod, Rod said the same thing about the uh, plastic pipe. Uh, Whiskey One Quebec Papa is on. Excellent show on grounding, so important. Oscar Uniform 2 Victor is on. And uh, from India, it's 1.45 in the morning in India right now. Victor Uniform 3 Yankee Papa Papa. And our good friend Mike, Kilo Echo 3 Juliet Papa. Chris uh, said, Kilo, November 5, Kilo Mike, good receive system info. Can your slides be made available? Well, most of these slides are part of my um, either K3LR or grounding and bonding slide deck. Um, and uh, so I would suggest, Chris, you get in touch uh, with Terry, K8 Mike November Juliet. It's K8MNJ at DXEngineering.com and request a presentation for your club. And uh, we do uh, four or five of them a week. And uh, it's it's really good to get the information out there. And we go into more detail too. And uh, Bob, Whiskey for Papa Golf says, uh, great info, thanks. He's in Florida. So I hope uh, some of that stuff was helpful. Don't forget the SS30, very important to have SS30. And of course that is available uh, at DX Engineering. And so uh, we got the North American QSO party is on this weekend. We got uh, the Rookie Roundup is on RTTY. Lots of activities going on. And so I hope you get on the air and have some fun. And if we can help you have more fun, just give us a call here at DX Engineering. Until Tuesday, 73 from DX Engineering.